so uh, the role of UKIS. So let me ask our two young people representatives here. Sorry to label you in such a way. You are significantly younger than pretty much everyone else in the room. Um, in terms of UKIS, if you're sitting around with your mates and chatting and you say, hey, you know, let's talk about UKIS, would they go, yeah, UKIS, UKIS, that's that great place, that great organization <laughs> that tells us everything we need to know and we can just go to that one click, one place and we can find out what we need to know? Um, well, let's be frank with you, actually. People ask me where I'm going today. I said I'm going to the UKIS summit and they just look at me like, what? And I think that's quite pertinent. They know about how they, the channels are, they exist to support but that's about the extent of their knowledge. And they don't really know how it works. They're not even sure that they're going to get a response straight away. They know that there must be loads of other people <coughs> who are reporting it. So they need actually security and knowledge that if they do report it, they're going to get some kind of response, some kind of action will be taken. And again, it just needs more, I think, publicity, both actually out in the streets and in schools, so people can hear, understand that they, they can deal with it. So the answer is no, then? No. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Joe? Uh, it would be quite similar, especially with things, um, I know a little while back Facebook released the SEOP app, and you may have, people were speaking about it, it wasn't widespread, and it needs to be, it needs to be empowered into people that, yes, the UKIS does manage people to keep safe online, it gives you advice, because people don't really have much for, to turn to, because it is a very unsupported world in regards to online safety. So the brand isn't recognised amongst the young people who up there are asking the questions that they want some answers to? is the answer from both of you. Yeah. Okay, okay. So there's a number of themes that have come up. Um, I'm just gonna ask each of you um, some things. One thing I'm particularly interested in education, it seems to be coming up quite a lot. They, it talks about a lot in, in there. You've all mentioned it. Uh, Sonia also talked about it in, in some of the research that she, she helped us navigate. Um, maybe I could ask you first, Will, in terms of the work you do in schools, you work in primary schools with very young children, giving some very important messages. Sonia was suggesting that actually we need to start talking to kids about really difficult stuff, having some very difficult conversations that adults instinctively want to avoid. Um, what do you think about that? How can that be done? Is that something that we need to do through UKIS if we're thinking about things like pornography, that kind of stuff? We had some, um, we had some uh, funding from UKIS and the TDA and Vector to produce a resource which was specifically for primary schools, which, which was designed in a way to encourage teachers to talk about these subjects in school. Subjects around safe and safe use of technology without, without scaring ch children, but being able to equip them with the skills they need to navigate this environment. And that, and that work has been done, and it, it has proved to be very popular, but what, one of the challenges, and I guess this reflects on, on the answer to the last question, is about communication, making sure that everybody knows that this is available. And it's not just this resource, there are a range of different resources are available that are there for Primary, school, primary schools to use to develop uh, the, the teachers, training for teachers, but also to equip them with, with things that they can take into the classroom. And we are looking at, um, at very young children, at four and five year olds, looking to see what we can do to, to, to support the children at this age as they are interacting with technology. But we also think it's a really <coughs> interesting time to interact with parents, where parents are, are particularly engaged with their children at that stage. So that's something we're looking at at the moment. Thank you. Matt, you talked about coordinating um, industry in, in volunteering in schools. And um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about curriculum um, in general and your thoughts about that. I've been talking to Secretary of State for Education about a national digital curriculum, mm -hmm. that the curriculum is really not addressing the needs of young people in terms of their learning and their thinking. Um, do you think that the curriculum is something that needs to be thought about in terms of safeguarding and safety messages? Do you think that there needs to be something more standardised across schools, or do you think it's enough to send in teams of volunteers? Um, I do think that... I'm not an expert on education, <coughs> but I do think that if the government could encourage schools to take that as part of the curriculum, as part of the training, particularly we heard, you know, <coughs> the difficulty in getting into primary schools is a problem, and I know just from my personal experience trying to get the, um, the voluntary program that we run into, into my own children's primary school, because I've got children in senior um, secondary and primary school. The primary school was very resistant. This is not material that is appropriate for, for children of this age. And I tried to make clear that, you know, Will and uh, others at uh, Child Exploitation, CEOP, you know, have actually worked on age-appropriate messaging. So there is messaging appropriate for young children that most parents, I think, would be sat satisfied that their children were seeing. But, you know, I think it is a struggle. So if there's something that UKIS or the government or the ministers could do to actually 
um, encourage the schools to take that as part of the curriculum, I would support it. That would be one thing. Another piece of work that is being done, which I do support, is this sort of concept of a, of a one-stop one shop or a simplification of the messaging. Um, you know, I've been involved in this debate for thick end of 10 years, and one of the things that's always concerned me is if you go to any, any company, um, even different government departments would have different messaging, and different voluntary groups would have different messaging. So if, w if we can, and I know that this work is, is in train, and I think CEOP are leading it to some extent on behalf of UKIS, uh, at the behest of the minister, so I do support that. Simplify the messaging, agree what the right messaging is for parents and responsible adults, what it is for the different age groups of, y of young people and children, and then you know everybody try to stick to those messaging because parents and you know parents tell us again and again they get confused about what's the right thing they should be telling the children and the young people, and I think the young people and children to some extent are also confused. Although you know the guys here could probably tell us more more about what it feels like as a young person. Thank you, Matt. I did recommend the one-stop shop in 2008. It's missed its deadline. It's in train, but it's late. Okay. Um, actually, I want to come to you, Richard, next, if that's okay, just to keep on the yeah. subject of education. I look at my 16-year-old and 13-year-old. The way they use Facebook, I'm frankly jealous, particularly in terms of learning and projects they can do. But when I, I do speaking events, particularly to educationalists, they're all asking about how can we turn off Facebook? Yeah. How can we stop kids using it? Um, I suppose my question to you is, um, do you think that's a helpful way of thinking about things? What could be done differently to enable schools to feel less afraid about the pr proliferation of kids using social networking so that they can use it positively in terms of their development? So <coughs> we often use, I use the same phrase when uh, talking to politicians about using Facebook, which is you don't have to like it to use it. Uh, and I think that's the really important barrier sometimes to overcome. For educationalists, I think the reaction a lot of time is they personally don't like it. They're very uncomfortable about the technology. They don't understand why anyone would use it. Um, but for their audience, it, it is three, four hours of their daily lives. So I think being able to, uh, I think being able to educate around Facebook is really important, given the importance it has in the lives of the children. And we heard it there again today. Some of the most impactful things you can do. I mean, these are online technologies, but the education around them shouldn't be delivered online. It's face-to-face. -face. It's someone you respect, a teacher or a parent or an expert, face-to-face uh, -face telling you how to use it safely, showing you the privacy settings that can make a really big difference. But the person delivering that, I think, may have to overcome their own, if you like, subjective reaction to the technology in order to be able to teach it and recognize that it's important to those kids even if it's not their cup of tea. Thank you. Okay, just, um, I've got, we've got five more minutes. Just want to ask you guys something. Um, Joe, um, in terms of parents and young people and decision making about where young people spend their time online, do you feel that the online industries are transparent enough in terms of how they are helping kids stay safe online? And also, on top of that, what do you think could be done better to help parents and their kids make informed decisions about where they go online? I think um, industry takes sort of expects quite a high level understanding or at least a medium level understanding from most people and sometimes it isn't always the case and so you have um, sites that say oh we're safe we have protection features for our child and it's actually they're self-asserted they perhaps need some form of independent review to provide that they are actually protecting their children and they're being quite safe and they've got measures in place to protect that and it perhaps understanding that not everyone is computer literate not everyone has the ability to trawl through pages of privacy policies as, as is necessary by some schools. And it's perhaps then saying that people need to be right in place of that and sort of get to grips with the fact they need to interact with both the young people and their parents and perhaps parent, um, teachers, parents, carers. Thank you. That's a really interesting answer. It wasn't what I was expecting, and I'm really glad you said it. Can I just summarise to make sure that I'm not accused later of putting words in your mouth? Yeah. That <laughs> you said that... It's um, industry expects quite a high level of technological understanding, and that needs to be simplified. There's a lot of information out there. Um, there's a lot of self-assertion from industry that they are doing the right thing for young people. But did yeah. you use the words independent review? Yes. There needs Whoa. To be <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Okay. All right. If, oh, well, thanks very much, Joe. Great answer. You get an A star. Okay. And Alex. Um, in terms of the kind of broader theme of today, UKIS, how they can serve the needs of children better online, do, does UKIS need to really get itself together and brand itself so that 
Um, it's a recognised brand that people can use. Do you think it's enough that all these working groups are busying and scurrying away um, and trying to hit deadlines? What do you think could be come out of today that could make a real difference for kids online? I think you've hit the nail on the head, really, because it needs to be visible. People need to know about it. And also, I know it's a, about child internet security, but it's just as much important that parents are targeted to understand first so they can help their children. So if this UKIS and everything under that umbrella are doing their scaring away, but in a more public light than behind the scenes meeting deadlines, so they can educate parents, educate the children, then all that can kind of come together, and that will have the most fruit at the end of the day, rather than just continually doing things, but not necessarily having much to show from it. And I appreciate that's kind of debatable a little bit, but it needs to be actually obvious for all the users. Thank you all very much.